Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike. Today I'm gonna to talk about distributed uh, denial of service attacks. So DDoS is something that you probably read in the news a lot lately with Sony being attacked. You'll actually see some super hot gameplay here. It's on the PC right now. It'll be coming to the Xbox One later this year, and probably the PS4. Uh, and I was gonna talk about indie games, but instead I decided to talk about DDoS attacks. So uh, what is a DDoS attack? How do they actually accomplish this? I'm not gonna go into the super, super high tech details. I'm kinda gonna give you a high level overview of actually uh, what is what the different methods of DDoS attacks, where people get these, the uh, the resources to do these attacks, and the different ampl amplification techniques that people use to um, increase the devastation of these attacks. So essentially you start out with some infected computers. So infected viruses um, or infected computers are you know, infected by email, social media, malicious software, all of these typical areas where people get viruses and malware, uh, this is how it, th these computers get affected. They're, op they're remotely operated uh, without the user's uh, or the owner's knowledge. So sometimes you might notice that your computer is really slow or you go over you know, an old person's house and their computer is devastation devastatingly slow. Um, it'd probably be because they are a victim of the DDoS uh, attacks or they're being used, uh, their computer has, is being used for DDoS attacks. And it's interesting that some, a couple million of, of, of machines are, are being used for these DDoS attacks um, all over the world. So it's something that you might wanna clean off your computer for because they might be utilizing your, uh, your hardware. So essentially, after you get this huge network of computers, which people call the botnet, um, it actually sends, there are two different ways. It'll either send an arbitrary large amount of uh, random data to block the victim's bandwidth, or it, it sends more requests than the server could handle. And the weird thing is, is that botnets can be purchased or rented for pretty minimal fees of around $150 to take down a, a small website for about a week. So uh, the pricing scale here is is pretty low. And, and I found that to be the most interesting in my research. There are four main classes of DDoS attacks. The first is TCP connection attacks, which pretty much just occupies the connections on the server. So a server can only connect to a certain amount of computers at once, and this essentially just occupies as many connections as possible, um, hopefully blocking all connections from other users. Volumetric attacks attempt to consume bandwidth, which causes congestion on their end. And another interesting fact is that there have been DDoS attacks that have used entire countries uh, bandwidth caps to do these attacks. I uh, found that to be extremely interesting. The next type is fragmentation attacks. These uh, reduce servers performance by sending a flood of fragments, uh, fragmented data, which then need to be reassembled by the server. So imagine if you were to send a letter to your friend, but you cut it up in a million pieces and you sent it to them. Well, now your friend has to reassemble the message before they could read it. This is pretty much exactly what they're, what they're doing with these attacks. The last one is application attacks. So this one just attacks a specific aspect of the service uh, and which can actually uh, only takes a few machines, well, a few, uh, maybe a couple hundred, but a, a minimal amount of machines and are pretty hard to detect because it's so focused on a specific area and that one area could actually take down the whole project. So there are two different types of amplification techniques um, that I'm gonna talk about. The first one is DNS reflection. And so this one, pretty much the attacker just sends a small request that then asks the victim servers to send a large reply. So it would be as if a one megabyte um, message was sent requesting a 10 gigabyte um, response. And this amplifi amplification technique can actually increase um, botnet by about 70 times. So if you have 100 computers out there asking for a gig of information by sending a megabyte of information, I mean, 70 times that, you do the math, I mean, it, it, it could stack up pretty significantly um, on the server side. The next one is charge in refle reflection. And this one, uh, it's kind of odd, but old old printers have a testing service called Chargin on them, and it pretty much asks, it allows users to ask a device to reply um, a stream of random characters. So it kind of makes sense. You want to test your printer, print out a random page of characters. There it is. But this is actually used to amplify DDoS attacks um, when utilized in a different fashion. So, anyways, guys. 
that's how DDoS attacks work. That's where people get the resources to do DDoS attacks. And that is something that, you know, I decided that I didn't know enough about DDoS attacks. So I went out there and did some research and I'll leave a link in the description, which has a tons of information about DDoS attacks and, and uh, you know, the frequency and, and how exactly they work. And there's so much information you could read on it, but that's where I got most of this information. So it's a neat read if you wanna get even more in depth, if you wanna go a little bit lower level um, on this topic. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.